again, Privileged Ones and Guardians, and welcome back to another Destiny episode. Before we get into it, I am giving away a thousand silver on the channel, and all you have to do to enter and win is be subscribed to this channel, like this video, and comment down below, leave a comment where you live. You don't have to give me your actual address, just give me the city, the state, and the country that you live in. That's going to narrow it down to where my fan base majorly lives. And when we get to 25,000 subscribers, I'm going to start making plans to do a meet and greet with a lot of you guys. So I want to know where the most of you live. So that way I can go to that area and we can possibly meet up and have a good time, possibly at a restaurant. I'll pay for everybody that shows up, that sort of thing. So it's going to be pretty exciting. Now, to get into this video, we're going to be going and doing another episode of Xur's Day Inventory and Location Review. Now, Xur is located where all these people are right now over down by the vanguard like legitimately look at all these people just hovering over here they just they just want to check out Zer and hang out I guess okay so Zer's located over down by the vanguard now what does he have okay so he has the heavy ammo sense three and ten of them remember you save if you buy the ten then you get the three of coins you get the glass needles and then we've got the exotic shards and the motes of light now what should we and should not buy? Hands down, three of coins with the brand new glitch farming method that I showed you guys just recently this week. You can definitely buy the three of coins and get that going. If you start farming those exotics, you might want the glass needles to re-roll those exotics. And then you also want the heavy ammo sense. Heavy ammo scents are always good. You, you always want to keep heavy ammo scents in your storage. That way when you're going and doing the raid or any other PvE event, you're just prepared. Next up, we've got the Zalo Supercell. Now, Zalo Supercell is hands down my favorite exotic to use when I'm trying to do the weekly heroic strikes. And the uh, strike is Arc Burn. And currently right now, the strike is Arc Burn. So... I would actually recommend getting the Zalo Supercell if you don't have it and running it. It is the only primary weapon of this meta that actually has a burn damage. So there's no solar damage out there, there's no void damage out there, but there is the Zalo Supercell running arc damage. So if you have this, it can definitely help in the weekly heroic strikes. Next up, we've got the Claws of Ahimkara. Should you get it? Eh... You know, Warlocks are pretty OP with an additional melee, but there's other exotics out there that I would more likely prefer than just running this one. Also, this one is going to have increased reload speed for Pulse Rifles, which is fairly decent, but Pulse Rifles are going to be buffed and nerfed pretty soon, along with the rest of the weapons in your primary slots. So, Pulse Rifles might not be the, the, the next PvP monster in Crucible you might actually be seeing auto rifles rise up like year one, which would be interesting because I kind of want to test out the Suros regime once all these buffs and nerfs happen. Next up, we've got the Graviton Forfeit. Now, gain Shade Step. Pretty useful in certain situations, but would I recommend it to the Hunter subclass? Um, honestly, no. I honestly wouldn't recommend it. I have used Graviton Forfeit probably... Uh, for the first week I ever did the King's Fall raid. After that, I have not used it since, and I would rather prefer running the Chest of Alpha Lupe or running the, um, like, I, oh, I love Shinobu's Vow. Shinobu's Vow is great, especially when you're running the Blade Dancer and, you know, you're ready for those skip grenades. That's what I prefer to use. So Graviton's Forfeit on this hand? No, I wouldn't recommend it. It does have an intellect and strength roll, which is all right for the hunter. Also, moving back to this one, this one has a strength roll for your warlock, which honestly isn't good. So definitely no claws of Ahamkara. Graviton forfeit, just toss that aside. Now, glass house. Should we get it? Well, it's got a max roll of intellect of 89, which is actually fairly decent. And you also get blessings of light and weapons of light last longer, which, if you're using it inside of the raid, awesome. You might want to get this. It's actually very useful. Um, if you are a PvE player, the Glass House is great. Now, if you're a PvP player, I would highly uh, not recommend this exotic. And I would be running other things. And I would also be running a completely different class altogether. I mean, yes, you can run the, the uh, Fun Police. 
and you can run that setup with your Titan and run the Juggernaut shield and stuff like that. And this would work out pretty well. And also run a shotgun. But then again, shotguns are going to be getting nerfed. And we might not actually be seeing the meta run around the bubble and run around the Titan with shotguns. So we might be seeing that change very soon. So I would not recommend the Glass House. Honestly, the only exotic I recommend from Xur this week is probably the Zala Supercell. Just so you have it. So you're prepared for like weekly heroic strikes running arc burn or possibly even the nightfall running arc burn. It is great to have a primary that runs some sort of damage other than kinetic. So having a solar avoid and a arc primary is very important, especially if you revert back to being in year one. Now we only have the Zalo, so take that opportunity when you can. Arc damage in your primary, very, very good. Just saying. And also, this gun deals out a lot of damage for the fact that the arc actually transfers to enemies near the other enemies that you're shooting. So there's a lot of damage driven out of the Zala Supercell. Next up, your Legacy Engram. Only buy these if you're missing the Year 1 Engrams and they're not in your kiosk. Other than that, these aren't important. They are Legacy, so they're going to revert to Year 1 Engrams, and they're not actually going to be the light level possible and appropriate for doing like Trials or the Raid or anything like that. So they're not very important. So there you have it, Guardians. Thank you all for watching this video, and if it helped in any way, shape, or form, decide on what you were going to buy from Xur. If you're a Year 3 player, take my uh, consideration. Don't buy the three armor pieces. You can farm for those. They're not actually going to be useful for you. If you're a Year 3 player and you just started Destiny, go for that Zalo Supercell. For anybody else that doesn't have the Zalo Supercell, definitely grab it. And there you have it, Guardians. Thank you all for watching this video. Drop a like on it. Share it with your friends, comment down below, and as always, stay violent, be privileged, and we'll see you all in the next episode.